You know, it's really exciting to be working to improve outcomes of America's jails and prisons. We've been working over the past several weeks to try and to try and expand our distribution with organizations that distribute our content into jails and prisons across America. Earlier this week, I had to travel to a different state. I'm not at liberty to start talking about the state or the company with whom I'm working. But I, one thing I can say is it's super exciting for me to be able to get into more jails and prisons to help more people who are living without hope understand what steps or strategies they can use today to begin building something better for tomorrow. And I, I want sometimes people in jail and prison to understand just how much of a challenge that is, just how much of a heavy lift it is to get administrators to bring our courses inside or to get the attention of people who are serving time inside. And one thing I know is that everybody inside of a jail or prison has one thing in common. Every one of them wants to get out, but they also have to be thinking about what they're going to do when they, are, when they get out. And they have to be thinking about how their decisions in jail or prison are going to influence the employers that may hire them. I want them to think about the challenges that we have in persuading legislators to change the laws that will allow more people to work toward improving outcomes of the system. We all, as I think all of us as a society, want to see improved outcomes, but sometimes we don't really reverse engineer how difficult it is to get those outcomes. Well, as a person that served 26 years inside, I can tell you how important it is to me. That's why I'm excited whenever I get all of these letters that people write to, write to us from, from that are serving time inside of jails or prisons. We receive these letters, and although I may not have time to respond to them all, what I can do is use them as evidence. I can take them whenever I'm going to make a presentation to any body of stakeholders. I can bring these stacks of letters and tell them, open any one of these letters and you will see how many people inside want to work toward preparing for a pathway to excellence, preparing for a pathway that will lead to a law-abiding, sustaining, sustainable life. People want to pursue that but they don't have the tools. I just heard today that only one out of every five people in custody in America have access to any kind of programming at all. And that's really discouraging because if we're not teaching people inside how they can work toward a better life on the outside, then those people are learning a different set of, uh, of lessons. And those are lessons that nobody wants them to learn. And so as somebody who did so much time I have this real duty to kind of learn what are people thinking. And I was speaking with one guy today who's a potential funder, and we were talking about how we were helping people in, inside uh, develop a record or develop a roadmap or a plan that would lead them to get out earlier. And he said, I don't have any interest in that. I don't want people getting out earlier. The, the real story for this fella is, I don't think he gets the message is that if people lose hope while they're in prison, if people are not working towards something better, they are going to return to society and not be productive. They're going to find that employers are reluctant to hire them or they will either be underemployed or unemployed. They could have potential new problems with the criminal justice system. They can have uh, a pathway to homelessness. And for most people that come out, it's further problems with the law. So we don't want that to be the situation with you. If you're going into the system, we definitely want you thinking about how you can emerge successfully. And that's why we invest so much of our time and energy and resources to develop this content, to help people at every stage of the journey, whether they are just going in, whether they have just learned that they become a target of an investigation, whether they have learned that they are going to have to change their plea, whether they have learned that they're coming out. It doesn't matter what stage of the system they're in, there is a whole panoply of problems that follow, and we strive to be uh, a resource that they can use to get a better outcome. That's why I encourage you to visit us at prisonprofessors.com, or if you're listening on iTunes or YouTube, to subscribe to our programs so that you can get information that will help you. And uh, we just really want to give you the tools and the resources you can use to help yourself. And we are super grateful to you, to those of you who are writing to us 
from inside. We are enthusiastic about the new developments that we are making to build more productive and effective content and to raise capital that will allow us to scale um, and really solve that problem of, of thinking about how sad it is that only one out of five people in custody are really getting the tools and the resources they need to succeed. I know how difficult it was during the time that I served to find access to learning and resource materials. But I also know that if somebody has a will, there's a way. And we're going to continue developing that content with hopes of helping more people emerge with their dignity intact and with opportunities to prosper. So keep working through the Prison Professors Program if you're watching this inside of a jail or a prison. But if you're outside, consider visiting our site and seeing ways that you can be a part of building the solution. This is the way that we can all work toward being the change we want to see in the world. I am Michael Santos, and I believe in you.